All right, hi, welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren here, Intellectual Property Law. Today I've got a good story for you. This is a WEPO, as you can see up here, WEPO, World Intellectual Property Organization Arbitration and Mediation Center. This is one of the places you can go when you're trying to get someone's domain, okay? You think someone's cyber squatting on your domain, you can file a UDRP, Uniform Domain Resolution Procedure, okay? You can file an arbitration complaint, okay? There's three elements in the complaint. I'm going to go over it with you. The person that's seeking the domain, in this case, it's, you're going to find out one of my competitors, um, filed a UDRP against me. Very ill-advised, very ill-advised, uh, but I tried to talk them out of it. They decided, nope, I got to go forward. We really want this domain that you have, Attorney Steve. Uh, the domain at issue, I'll show you that down here. I own torrentdefenders.com. Okay, this firm is one of my competitors. Um, law offices of Jeffrey J. Antonelli doing business as Antonelli Law Limited, okay? So he brought this suit against me, no advance letter, no, no letter saying, hey, you're cyber squatting, none of this stuff. Even spelled my name wrong through his uh, counsel. His counsel is Tristan Weaver, was the uh, lawyer from Weaver Robinson in Texas. So uh, he files a complaint, gets, spells my name wrong. Um, but anyway, they're bringing this dispute because I own torrentdefenders.com. Well, Antonelli, um, he bought this domain with the dash. And obviously, I mean, who buys a domain with a dash these days? So I think he was upset and he wanted my torrent defenders. By the way, I was recently identified by unicorn.com as the top copyright infringement defense law firm in the United States in accordance with the number of cases handled. So I think maybe the competition hit him or something, or I don't know what happened, but he has he had torrent-defenders, the panel, the domain panel here calls it the less desirable domain. Of course it is. I mean, that's why I think he was trying to upgrade, uh, but doing it through this uh, WIPO administration uh, arbitration process through his counsel. Now his counsel is the same guy that filed his trademark, the Antonelli has a trademark apparently for torrentdefenders.com. And they went and filed this domain, Torrent Defenders, after, after I had been using torrentdefenders.com. Um, so it was two years. He like literally waited almost almost right around two years to go file his, his trademark. So I think he, my uh, competition was really getting to him. In California, uh, where we handle a lot of cases, there's really no... There's really no one that handles anywhere near the amount of cases we do. So I think the must have got to him. He went and he filed, hires this counselor, Tristan Weaver, or uh, Tristan Robinson, I should say, from Weaver Robinson. And uh, this Tristan Weaver, or uh, this Tristan Robinson, I should say, is also, was also, uh, have a document showing he's also listed as a trusted BitTorrent lawyer for uh, this Antonelli law firm in, in uh Illinois. So it's really all convoluted. It's the same attorney that filed for the trademark. And now they want they got together and said, why don't we go get this domain name? It's a better domain name. So I fought back. I, of course, I wasn't going to take that. I tried to talk him out of it. I said, this is, you know, you have to show three things as a plaintiff in a BitTorrent case. And it was clear 100% to me that, that he couldn't show these uh, factors. But they got, uh, you know, I have an uh, email here. They got all bullish. We're going forward to the fullest extent permitted. Yeah, okay. So they did that. We, def we defeated them. We defeated them soundly. And I'm going to go over some of the key points uh, here with you. If you want to read the procedural, just pause the video and, and read it. I'm not going to go through all this. There's some of the factual background. Um, it talks about our, our work. Uh, both parties work in BitTorrent defense. We handle strike three holdings cases. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's no, in California, we handle a bulk of the cases in, in Southern District, Central District, Eastern District, Northern District, up and down the state. So I think he was maybe just upset that uh, the competition had. Uh, um, heated up on him. I'm not quite sure exactly why he did it, but here's some more allegations that uh, now this is the this is the panel decision. Okay, I want you to know that this is what the panel decided. Okay, so go through and read some of that if you want, if you're interested. Um, 
I'm sure this had to break their heart when they read it because, boy, the, the panel hit hard. We got a three-panel, three, three, panel, uh, three uh, mediator panel because I wanted three people to make sure that at least two of them would um, know what was going on and not allow this, uh, what they were trying to do here. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so I'm going to let you read that if you want to pause it, read it and pause it. But I'm going to go down to the stuff I want to tell you about, Okay. Uh, pause that if you want to read. So um, as I was mentioning, it, this a UDRP is a pretty simple thing, really. Um, there's three things that a person must prove, a complainant must prove, must satisfy the panel. Three things. This is it. One, the disputed domain name is identical or confusingly similar to a trademark or a service mark in which complainant has rights. Now that has to be either common law rights or a registered trademark. Remember I said he got his trademark like two years after I had my domain name. So, you know, we're, we're investigating that right now, by the way. Uh, two, they have to prove respondent has no rights. They would have to show I have no right or legitimate interest in respect to the d disputed domain. Uh, that failed. You can see in bold here that failed. The disputed domain name was registered and being used in bad faith. Well, that was proven to be false too. So as I said here, the law offices of Jeffrey J. Antonelli failed to prove the two bolded items and lost the case. Uh, Tristan Robinson, the losing attorney. So I'll let you read our uh, section one. Um, I Personally, I, think, I don't think this was even proven, but uh, the panel... Uh, found it, I believe, mostly for best I can determine is because there was a trademark, but that was filed after I had my domain. But you can read it here and reasonable minds can differ. But when it came down to my legitimate rights or interests, uh, the panel said, you know, uh, here's the ways that you can, you can show it. And then the court came down here and said, look, where a domain name has been registered, before a complainant has acquired trademark rights, only in exceptional cases would a complainant be able to prove a respondent's bad faith. So again, he gets a trademark after me and then tells me I got the domain in bad faith. The panel didn't buy it. Um, says right here, and these parts I bolded in red, okay? Uh, complainant here has not met his evidentiary burden on either issue. Complainant filed his trademark in 2018 two years after a respondent registered the domain name, had respondent, that's me, done a USPTO search, that's the United States Patent and Trademark Office, prior to the registration of my domain, he would not have discovered the complainant or his putative mark. True, complainant has alleged prior usage and common law rights, but has furnished scant proof of such rights. That is absolutely true. I don't know what proof was uh, even, uh, you know, I don't know what proof there really even was other than, oh, I had a domain in a blog. Uh, at any rate, um, again, reasonable minds can differ, okay? The only evidence of pre-filing, here it is, the only evidence of pre-filing use are undated firm brochures attached to the complaint. So th th that was what the evidence found is there was a brochure, okay? That's not... Uh, folks, that's not real strong evidence of, of, of common law rights, okay? So um, there was no survey evidence. There was nothing like that. No proof of sales, anything like that. Uh, here it says, the court says, there is similarly no evidence of respondents targeting of complainant, only the unsupported allegations of complainant's counsel. That's Tristan Robinson. Those are of no force or effect. It means you can't just make conclusory allegations with no evidence. I mean, this is, you know, law is a game of evidence and proof, not just making uh, assertions. Um, so yeah, I got this complaint out of the blue. Uh, nobody called me a cyber squatter. They just filed this, tried to get here. And then they make these allegations that I'm registering and using it in bad faith. You know, that could tend to, uh, you know, injure and, and slander my, my reputation, my, my great reputation for my firm. Um, but they made it nonetheless. I tried to talk them out of it. They figured they had the better case and wanted that domain. For similar reasons, the panel does not find evidence of bad faith in their registration and use of the domain. 
And you can read the rest here. Accordingly, the panel finds the complainant has not proven that respondent registered the disputed name in bad faith. So they're alleging things that they can't prove. Regarding use of the disputed domain, complainant asserts that respondent has used the disputed domain to deliberately disrupt complainant's business. So he thinks I was trying to disrupt his business. Well, there is a term uh, called competition. Um, you know, I think maybe somebody ought to, ought to learn about that a little bit more. But you are allowed to compete with people. Um, and yes, I was named uh, top, you know, I'm number one, I'm number 21 on the Lex Machina list of copyright lawyers in the United States as far as cases handled plaintiff or defendant. But number one in defense, uh, as, as recognized by Unicort in regards to number of cases handled. So apparently, uh, he was upset that I was disrupting his business. Uh, with my domain that he later filed a trademark on. Bear all this in mind. The panel is unable to find that the complainant has met its burden. So they're not meeting their burdens. They're not showing sufficient evidence. But here's the big one, okay? This is what I wanted to talk about. The three-member panel finds the, uh, and one judge had a, uh, a uh, potential, didn't go, didn't go along with it, but at least two of the, uh, the three-member panel uh, finds that the law offices of Jeffrey J. Antonelli abused the UDR process. Now, when you're a lawyer, you don't want to have other lawyers, especially other IP lawyers like these um, uh, mediator panels are, telling you that you abused a legal process. I mean, that's something that you don't want to do as a lawyer. But here it is. So when you do stuff, you have to expect the ramifications and the consequences under the heading reverse domain name hijacking, what we call RDNH. Here it goes, under paragraph 15E of the UDRP rules. If, after considering the submissions, the panel finds that the complaint was brought in bad faith, that's the complaint brought in bad faith, for example, in an attempt at reverse domain name hijacking, or was brought primarily to harass the domain name holder, hmm, the panel shall declare in its decision that the complaint was brought in bad faith and constitutes an abuse of the administrative proceeding. Respondent has requested such a finding in this case. Okay, so you want to go there, then you have to be prepared for the consequences. The majority of the panel, so one, one apparently uh, dissented, uh, I don't know why, However, two of three, that's why you get a three panel uh, judges so that, so that it can be weighed and argued am amongst three ver very talented people. Several of the factors set out support such a finding are present. I'm gonna, you can look at the different ones they talked about here, um, but here's what we have. Unreasonably ignoring established policy precedent, notably as captured in the WIPO overview, except in limited circumstances, which prima facie justify advancing an alternative legal argument, the policy precedent ignored by the complainant here, that would be laws of Jeffrey Antonelli through their counsel, Tristan Robinson, consists of two fundamental underpinnings, registration of the disputed domain prior to complainants accruing trademark rights and failure to provide evidence of crucial allegations. You know, so, you know, putting things out there without making an, uh, an honest argument with evidence as to what you have. Um, basing a complaint only on the barest of allegations without any supporting evidence. You know, that's almost like slandering someone. You make allegations, but you don't have any proof. Um, that's what the panel found, and that's, again, under the heading reverse domain name hijacking. Further, here, I love this one, complainant himself, an intellectual property lawyer, is represented by counsel, a factor that some panels have found, and the panel majority finds here should be held to a higher standard and I couldn't agree more um, you know you have Antonelli who uh, uh, law office Antonelli is an intellectual property firm and he hired a, his own trademark lawyer in Texas who's also apparently a member of the Antonelli network so he knew or ought to have known this was the case the fact that complainant is represented by counsel makes the filing of this complaint listen now 
all the more inexcusable. All the more inexcusable. In other words, what on earth were you thinking here? The majority of the panel finds that the complaint was brought in bad faith and constitutes an abuse of the administrative proceeding. Now, I tried to talk these guys out of it. I, I gave them a lot of evidence. I sent them a lot of things. I tried to explain why their thinking was way wrong on this. But they were so bullish, determined to go forward, and now look what you have. This is what happens when you don't, when you let your passions get the best of you and not look at the facts and the evidence and the rulings and the precedent, okay? So Vondren wins no domain for the law offices of Jeffrey J. Antonelli. I guess he will use the dash for now, or maybe he can come up with a, a better domain name. We'll find out. It is important to note that I advise counsel. Yep, you already got all that. That's already, already got that. Here it is, final piece. Um, final piece. Now reviewing my legal options, which I do believe I have re legal options. There is the ACPI, uh, ACPA anti-cyber squatting that I'm looking at. I'm looking at abuse of, um, abuse of the legal process. I'm looking at other things right now. I haven't made my mind up what I'm going to do, but, um, stay tuned for my response. And again, this is an example of what you don't want to do. Um, get sound legal counsel. If you're in a domain dispute, get sound legal counsel uh, before you go and try to get somebody's domain. Um, you know, for those considering the choice of BitTorrent counsel, consider these things when you're making your decisions of um, people that will be willing to, to do something like this to their competitors, okay? And again, successes is what we do here, helping people in Strike 3 BitTorrent litigation is what we do here. We do plan on a repeat performance in 2021 on the leaderboard. So if you need help, Vonder and Legal, you click We Defend. Here's our number. Thanks for watching. And um, again, these are my opinions. This is what the panel found. And, you know, it's a shame that somebody even had to, to waste everybody's time in uh, even bringing something like this. So that's UDRP. That's uh, a look at the WIPO process, domain disputes. Attorney Steve, I got to run. Thanks for watching. Bye now.